Get the authorized version of the scriptures. And turn with me in the scriptures to Genesis chapter 3. I'm going to begin with one verse. Uh, actually, let's read Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 5. Um, authorized version, that means the King James Version. The, the scriptures, okay? This, the authorized version, is God's perfect and errant given by inspiration word of God. Okay? Turn in Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 5. Let's read. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. <coughs> Uh, look, uh, look across to Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. Here's what uh, I have, verse 16 and verse 17 in Genesis chapter 2. Okay? And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But, condition, conditional clause, but, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it. Yes, he said that. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. In Genesis chapter 16, uh, uh, back. In Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. Uh, I don't see that, do you? Go ahead and read Genesis chapter 2 on your own time. Do you see that? No. Why did Eve do that? Most likely because Satan came. Uh, well, number one, where is Adam during all of this? Hmm. Hmm. Where was Adam? Number one. Number two, because Satan, uh, the serpent, by the way, is Satan. Please read Ezekiel chapter 28 from the authorized version of the scriptures to see who this serpent is. And also in the book of Revelation, that old serpent, the devil, called Satan. Okay? <laughs> uh, the serpent here is the devil, Satan, Lucifer. Okay? But... Satan going after the woman with her covering her husband not there. Okay? Very important to get. Where Adam was during all this? Well, don't know. Maybe he was making a sandwich. I don't know. Okay? But Satan goes after the woman. And because he is uh, going after the woman, asking these questions, she added to the word of God. Maybe out of fear, intimidation. But she clearly added to scripture because of the yea hath God said proposed upon her by Satan. Okay, let's continue. And the serpent said unto the woman, remember the serpent, the serpent is Satan. Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day that day, in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now, Bibles, okay, this, this, the King James Version, these are the scriptures. This is not a Bible. This is, even though, even though it says, well, these are the scriptures. Find the word Bible in the scriptures for me, okay? It's not in there. These are the scriptures, okay? Distinction in these last days is very, very important. <clears throat> That's why I reject the term Christian. 
emperor and call us as we called ourselves within the scriptures. Okay? The church of God or the church of the living God, which I prefer to use. Church of God or church of the living God. Okay? Um, there are those out there who know that I uh, uh, am adamant about that and will call me that as to rub it in my face, which is no bit, which is no skin off my backside, but Yes, we need to be distinct, okay? So, in the authorized version of the scriptures, read up on who the serpent is, okay? But, the Bibles pervert verse 5, like the NIV, the ESV, the New American Standard, okay? Which the Jesuit-trained scholars, the Ye Hath God Said Society, says come from the oldest and best manuscripts, Okay? It's a lie. It's a lie. Okay? They're liars. Okay? Satan's promise for disobeying God is that your eyes will be open and that ye shall be as God know uh, that ye shall be as gods, gods, knowing good and evil, being able to judge betwixt the two. That before this before this, the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, which this is the catalyst to it, they didn't, originally, it was not there. It was not needed. All man had to do, Adam, all man had to do was one simple thing. Don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You, you could have messed up, you could have had anything else, but don't eat from that one tree. That was it. But what is say? You know, it's like I've said before. When someone tells you, you know, you look at a computer panel and say, talk about it, but whatever you do, don't touch that red button. It'll be disastrous. And what in fallen man, in Adam, what do man want to do? What do men want to do? Makes you want to touch that red button, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. See, that's the old man that the scripture talks about. That uh, we are to put, that gets put away, that we are to flee from, that we are put to, to put away through our Lord Jesus Christ after He saves us. It's called the Change Life Doctrine. Okay, many people out there called easy believism heretics like to say you don't need to have a changed life. That's a lie. God does not save you in order to stay idle and to stay. Um, uh, Bathing in your own dung in sin. Okay? He does it's no. A changed life comes. Okay? Okay, are you you with me so far? You with me so far? But see, in Adam all men die. Okay? The old man, Adam. Satan's lie to you is you do against what God says, and you'll be able to see. I don't know, maybe be illuminated. And those who call themselves Christians, who are not of the church of the living God, okay? Or yea hath God said, yea hath God said, which comes from the Jesuit order. What is a Jesuit, you might ask? I'll put a link in the description box, okay? The Jesuits love evolution. Uh, even uh, Catholicism, you know, Mystery Babylon the Great, the Mother of Harlots, okay? Revelation chapter 17, okay? That's talking about Rome, Roman Catholicism. They love evolution, okay? Even in the catechism, in that Ducat, okay, they uh, give credence to evolution, okay? They give credence to it. But then again, when it comes to evolution, you need to define, define what type of evolution you are talking about, okay? The evolution of... Uh, Something came out of nothing by itself? That's a lie. That's a lie. And today on Google, if you sign in to Google or check it out, on August 1st, 1st uh, 1984, apparently, um, this Turkana missing link was found. 1.5 billion of years ago. In a galaxy far, far away. Today, we are seeing a brazen, open attack on God, 
our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father who created everything, and his word, the authorized version of the scriptures. Not, not a Bible. No, because the Bibles are given to you by Roman Catholicism. Okay? And all you wicked Catholics out there, you did not give us the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? This is God's book. You understand? But, since they have been so kind to put this out there for us, for everybody, uh, this evolutionary baloney sandwiches, as of the Church of the Living God, I, I, I really feel it is incumbent to, uh, upon me, even though we do not have freedom of speech anymore in these times, to exercise it, to give to you people a little morsel of the truth. Okay, now this, uh, I forget what channel this uh, video is from, and this is, I'm using this to uh, educate, to inform, okay, whoever did this video, whoever this uh, channel is, I am not attacking the man or the channel that did this video. Content is what is being addressed, not at hominid, okay? This is a very short video. We're just gonna just gonna go through this, okay? Get your authorized version of the scriptures because we're gonna read some scriptures after this. This is very quick, okay? So, so let's let's go, shall we? Watch this. Hey guys, welcome back. Today's search engine Google shows the Turkana human. The Go Before Research Project KFRP is a cornerstone program of the Turkana Basin Institute in Turkana. By the way, Google, um, Google wouldn't happen to be overrun with the Jesuit order at all. Wouldn't be in the hand and control of the Jesuit order, would it? No, no, that's conspiracy, right? That's conspiracy, yeah, yeah. Kenya. The paleontology project includes both field work and scientific research to better understand how the Kobifara area around the Lake Turkana holds clues to the evolution of human beings. The KFRP has unearthed more than 10,000 hominid fossils. Turkana boy is the <laughs> oh, it's, it's, you know, it, you you people who believe in this, you call we the Church of the Living God for believing that God said, and here it is. You want to believe that nothing exploded and that our little ancestors came out of a body of water that evolved from nothing as a <laughs> little piece of spit snot crawling out of a piece of water and over billions and billions of years evolved into what we are now. And you call us the crazy ones. You call us the immature ones. Okay. Okay. Evolution is a religion. You need faith in order to adhere onto its uh, tenets, onto its precepts. Very similar onto the religion of the poison crown. You have to have faith in order to believe in its tenets, its precepts, its doctrines. But we have the Church of the Living God who trust in the authorized version of the scriptures, uh, authorized version of the scriptures, believers. We're the, we're the crazy, immature, uneducated ones. Mm-hmm.
you, do you think your uncle was an ape? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Most complete early human skeleton ever found. It was discovered on the western shore of the lake. While the Kobe Fara rock formation is on the east. Let's have a look. Now, you got to keep in mind, there is no fossil record at all of sporting evolution from one thing, from, for example, there is no proof of a dog turning into a goldfish or vice versa, okay? There's no evidence of that. It's a fairy tale. It's a lie. You look into the Scopes monkey trials, okay? It's it, Evolution is a sham. It's a fairy tale. Even Darwin himself on his deathbed doubted its own um, lividity, its own credence, its own that it could be actually like that, okay? There are some out there that believe that Darwin actually got saved before he died. I doubt that highly, but um, he even questioned his own religion, which he founded, okay? But of course, anything to detract away from the scriptures and our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, which is exactly what Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, does. And that is represented by Roman Catholicism, and her army, the Jesuit order. And that is Satan and his church and his army. Okay? This is what they're giving you people. The religion of evolution, survival of the fittest, you know, things get better in time. When thermodynamics says everything um, falls apart in time. There was a quote that I like to uh, like uh, that I like to borrow, which is very true. I don't know how anyone who has a used car can believe in evolution. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we you know Church of the Living God. We trust God. We're the crazy ones. Yeah, you you believe in the evolu uh, religion of evolution. Why not believe in the religion of the cog of the poison crown? God help you people. Okay? Let's 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 continue. <laughs> Too. There is evidence out there that you can find on your own time about people, how these guys, these evolutionist people with the bones and stuff, have found uh, certain bones that they knew were of apes and then filed parts down and put human, excuse me, excuse me, human. We are not human men. We are man. Beg your pardon. But they've taken like uh, jaws of men and put them together with apes and stuff like that. Yeah, the archaeologists who uh, uh, are uh, proponents of the evolutionary religion, they would go to that 
kind of legs. Keep that in mind. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Look at this. This is incredible. And you know what's interesting, too? They like to tie all of this onto the Hamites. Why is that? Why is that? I, I've always found that fascinating. Okay? They don't tie these things onto um, Shem or Japheth. It seems to always be Ham. Why? Why is that? And unfortunately, there are those out there who um, are truly um, hate other kindreds, who hate the kindred of the Hamites and of the Shemites, um, who like to use evolutionary stuff as an attack against the Hamites. Okay? Those of you of the kindred of Ham, Hamites. Catholicism is your enemy. Catholicism is your enemy. Okay? Please keep that in mind. Please keep that in mind. Shem and Japheth, I am of Japheth, the true Hebrews, you know, the Jews, they are of Shem, the Asiatics. Okay? Hamites. Descended from Africa, okay? Catholicism, Mystery Babylon the Great. They are your enemy. Please keep that in mind, my friends. That's enough. Yeah, like I said, I this has nothing to do with this channel, with this dude, or what have nothing. I was just this is the one that I found is like use this as an example to this channel. Hey, I'm I'm not you wanna believe in that stuff. That's your problem. I'm not attacking you. The content, okay? Not the man or the channel at Hamadan, the content, okay? Okay, but so, go ahead and get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn to the beginning. The beginning. The beginning. What is the beginning? Genesis. That's what Genesis means. Beginning. Okay? Genesis chapter 1. You need faith in order to believe in evolution. It's a religion. Just like you need faith to believe in the poison crown. The Jesuit order has made it into a religion. People are falling for it very quickly. But, Genesis chapter 1. If they feel they have the right to jam down everyone's throat, the fairy tale lie of evolution, then you know what? I'm going to read now. We're going to share some scripture together. Genesis chapter 1. Beginning. That's the beginning. Verse 1. In the beginning, God 
created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God. Well, how did God get here? I don't know. I don't know. I don't need to know. I don't need to know. Okay, I don't need to know how God got here. I don't know. I know how we got here. Okay, I know that. But um, that, I don't know. It's not the point. But this says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. See, and these guys tell you uh, billions of years ago when the earth is actually in accordance with the flood, that the earth is about 6,000 years old. Young earth, as it is said. Verse 2, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the capital S, Spirit of God, moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Spoke, let there be light. And there was light. Now, first three verses are very important in the beginning. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 3. Why is that? You see the Godhead. At work here. What is the Godhead? We are made in the image of God. Okay? What does that mean? You and I, we have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a body. Okay? God is spirit. The Holy Ghost. The Father. The soul. Body. The Word. Made flesh the word made flesh jesus christ jesus christ god saves christ anointed one okay jehovah saves jesus okay jehovah saves christ anointed one okay spirit soul and body that's what makes jesus the father okay he even claims to be the Father, okay? Jesus Christ claims to be God the Father, okay? Got several videos on the channel here uh, addressing that. Go find them, okay? But we see the Godhead, not the Satanic Trinity. The Trinity tells you that God cons consists of three persons. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Okay, that's what a person is. The Trinity says that there are three persons that make one God. But yet, when you ask a Trinitarian, well, we don't believe in three gods, one God, but God is three persons. You go, yeah, that's right. And a person is a spirit, soul, and body, but there's three persons, but there's one. It doesn't work. See, the Godhead can separate itself. Himself, the Godhead, the spirit can be separated. God, the soul can be separated. The uh, body, okay, okay, the Godhead can separate. Okay, the Godhead can separate. Okay, and we see it here in the beginning God, the Father, verse 2, and the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, and God said, the Word spoke. The word made flesh, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Verse 3. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Separation. Light, indigenous with that which is good according to God and the scriptures. Darkness, indigenous to that which is evil, corrupt of Satan. Okay? See, right away. In the very beginning of Scripture, God likes things oh, separate. Okay? Yeah. Let's continue. And God called the, lay, the light day. And the darkness he called night. Now, here's a big source of contention for some people. And the evening and the morning were the first day. The definitive article. One day. The first day. 
Bibles love to mess this one up. One day, or a certain time period, or some uh, or something like that. Okay, you compare the scriptures with these Bibles. The Bibles mess that up. Why? To give place to this gap theory. That the gap theory, as I understand it, I, I stay away from that because that's a waste of time and downright stupid. Okay, the gap theory is something, as I understand it, that. Between the day, between one day, there was like millions and billions of years and stuff like that. Total nonsense because the scriptures say that death came from Adam because they had disobeyed in the Garden of Eden. Okay. And if there were wars and stuff within the time period of this million year gap between a day or something like that, then there is death before death came by Adam. The gap theory is nonsense. I just, it's, it's dangerous. Don't mess with it. Um, I believe what God says in the scriptures, not a Bible, in the scriptures. The first day, the, the definitive article, first day, and it says, and the evening and the morning were the first day, evening and morning, 24 hour period. Okay. Okay. See, but Satan with his church, Roman Catholicism, and the Jesuit order with their yea hath God said. Okay, let's continue. And God said, and remember, God is speaking. Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Okay. Jesus Christ is God, the father, the creator. If you had seen Jesus. You had seen the Father. Jesus is the Father. Okay? Okay? Let's continue. Verse 6. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Again, division, separation. God is a God of separation. Okay? God is a God of distinction, people. Okay? Not blending everything together and calling it blood, which is what Catholicism is doing uh, right now through the Jesuit order, you know, bringing everyone together, okay? Ec ecumenicalism, it's called, okay? God, is, God likes things separate, okay? And God said, let there be a firmament in the waters of the, in the water act. And God said, let there be a firmament. In the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. Okay? The three heavens. Okay? The three heavens. You look outside, you know, you see the sky. That's one. That's one heaven. heaven. The second heaven, the firmament. The, the dome, you know, the dome around the earth, okay? That's the second heaven. The third heaven is where God is, okay? Okay? The, there are three heavens. First heaven, the sky. Look up to the heavens. There. There are the heavens, okay? The second heaven, the firmament, the dome around the earth, okay? That's the second heaven. The third heaven is where God is, okay? Okay? I have videos addressing these, um, so you can find them if you wish. Okay, so let's continue. And God called the firmament heaven. Oh, let's let me read verse seven again. God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. In the evening. And the morning were the second day, 24-hour period, second day. And God said, God spoke, the word made flesh, Jesus Christ, okay? And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together onto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. With the continents and stuff like that. 
and call and God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called he seas and God saw that it was good and God said let the earth bring forth grass the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind and god saw that it was good originally before the flood the atmosphere on the earth was totally different oxygen was more pure people could live to be a thousand years old people could live to be 10 foot tall okay um super you know you talk about superfoods and super fruits amen buddy okay part but things were different during the time uh, before the flood okay after the flood the atmosphere that we are familiar with is what is what we have today after the flood okay got to keep that in mind but also right away in verse 12 you see and the earth brought forth grass the herb yielding seed after his kind different kinds of plants trees fruits vegetations so on and so forth that is what is heretical and dangerous about genetically modified organisms gmo crops GMO foods, which here in America we are overrun with, okay? Man, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, okay? Um, man plays God when they take these seeds for crops and then mix them together to get ones that are um, resistant to fertilizer, resistant to this taste. Man is playing God when God created the seed bearing fruits and stuff like that, after his kind. Separate, distinct, okay? Distinction. Roman Catholicism, Mystery Babylon, the great Satan's church and his army are the ones that want to bring everybody together. Not God. If you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, we are all one in Christ Jesus. And in salvation in Christ, your skin color, your kindred, doesn't matter. If you're a woman or a man, it doesn't matter. In Christ, we are all one. But culturally, as pertaining to kindred, yes, God is a God of distinction. Okay? Okay? Japheth unto Japheth. Shem unto Shem. Ham unto Ham. And celebrate the beauty, the pure beauty of Ham. The beauty that is in the kindred of Ham. The beauty that is in the kindred of Shem. The beauty that is in the kindred of Japheth. There ain't nothing wrong with that, people. Not wrong with it at all. That's how God designed it. See, Satan through his church, Roman Catholicism. There you go. Verse 13. Well, let's read verse 12 again. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Evening, morning, 24-hour period. Three days. No gaps. With millions of years where death came in there. Yet the scriptures tell us that death came by Adam. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, okay. Verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night 
and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Now, people like this pick this verse. It's like, well, okay, you're saying these are days, and how come it says days like uh, right there? Ah, uh -huh. people, people. Verse 13, and the evening and the morning were the third day. Verse 13 came before verse 14. Okay, what is this talking about? Uh, people, 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 people. Okay, okay. You educated people who are of the religion of evolution and of the religion of the poison crown. Okay, you very intellectual collegiate scholars. Okay, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from night, light and darkness, separation, and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. The development of time on earth. Where God is, God is not bound by our time. Okay? A thousand years is a day unto the, uh, is like a day unto the Lord, and a day like a thousand. Okay? Time is irrelevant in context to God. But here on earth, here on earth, it's different. Our time, okay? Days and years, okay? That doesn't detract from or subtract from verse 13, evening and morning, the third day, meaning a day was 24-hour period, people. Nice try. You got to be pretty educated to come up with those kind of arguments. Educated by who? Jesuits. <laughs> Let's continue. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven, to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And to rule over the day and over the night. And to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Talking about the sun, the moon, that kind of thing. Okay? Those lights, the light of the sun, the light of the moon. Okay? To divide. Okay? Distinction, separation. In the beginning. It, it's... It's always been like that. God is a God of distinction, separation. Okay? Deal with it. In salvation in Christ Jesus, of the church of the living God, okay? There is neither male or female, bond or free, barbarian or Scythian, for we are all one in Christ Jesus as pertaining to salvation. Culture. Kindred. That kind of thing, that's something else. Separate. That's a God of variety. He likes different things. Or else we would all be cookie cutters. Okay? This didn't happen over millions and billions of years in a galaxy far, far away. Okay. Let's see, verse 17, pick up at verse 17. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the, from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. In the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, four, fourth day, four days, 24 hour period, okay? And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Now, the evolutionists will say, well, see, God's bringing things out of the waters. You know, fish and birds and that kind of thing. So, see, we can't. Do you see anything about man in there, by the way? 
No. No. We were created of the earth, dirt. From dust thou art, unto dust thou shalt return. And isn't it interesting that the curse uh, upon Satan is that um, he will lick the that he will lick the dust of the earth. He will eat the dust of the earth. Okay, and that's in Genesis three. Uh, I believe that's verse fifteen or seventeen. Um, and isn't it interesting that you and I as man that includes woman because remember woman means of man. Okay, uh, that means that Satan's big task is to go after us men. Man, keep that in mind, okay? Let's continue. From verse 22. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. Cattle, cows, stuff like that. Okay. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind. Separation, distinction, evolution is a lie, a fairy tale, a religion that requires a whole lot of faith. Okay. And uh, our Lord says, if you had faith the grain, as a grain of mustard seed, you need a whole lot to believe in this stuff, man, uh, evolution. Let's continue. Reading verse 25 again. No, let's read verse 24 again. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Okay. The Godhead can communicate one with another. The soul can communicate with the body, the body with the soul. The spirit with the, okay? The Godhead can communicate with one another, okay? So let us make man in our image. That's not an image of three persons making one God. No, no. No, that is not. Let's read this. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Because when you continue reading in the book of Genesis, are there nine Adams there? Are there nine Eves? No. There is Adam and Eve. Okay. Adam and Eve. All right. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat and to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein is, is life. I have given every green herb for meat and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Six days. God created everything. You, the evolutionist, believe in millions and billions. It's, you're the educated one. You're the educated one.
Okay, good for you. And here, let's uh, read Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3. Thus the heavens, the, the heavens, okay, the first, second, okay, the heaven where God is, okay. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. Seven day, okay? Seven dispensations within the scripture. Seven times or ages. The time we are in right now is the time of the Gentiles, okay? The time of the Gentiles also is referred to in the book of Revelation, yes. But this time is where a mystery, an unthinkable thing happened during this dispensation. The Gentile was grafted into the tree of the Jew. Hence, time of the Gentiles being grafted into the tree of the Jew. Because salvation is of the Jew, okay? It was to the Jew first, and then also to the Gentile. It says Greek. Greek is a Gentile, not Jew, okay? What an amazing thing that us Gentiles were grafted into the tree of the Jew. See, how do the Gentiles get it? You gave your heresy away when you mentioned about Abraham just had to receive it. That's why you go by, 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 by. Okay? That's why you go by. Okay? Don't got time for you, okay? Took a while, but you did expose yourself. It was ugly. So, go along with your coadjutor friends who believe like you do in easy believism, okay? So, people. God created the heavens and the earth about 6,000 years ago, okay? And several thousand years ago, what was it, about maybe 4,000 years ago, there was a flood. There was a flood, okay? There was a flood. Genesis chapter 6, okay? Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 8. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto, unto them, that the sons of God, the sons of God in this context are referring unto angels, saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which those chose, which they chose, angels having relations with the daughter of men. Very similar uh, about in the book of the, uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, you know, elves, a uh, uh, union between uh, gods and men or something like that, something like that or whatnot. But angels, the sons of God, having relations with the daughters of men. Okay? And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be in 120 years. Right there, 120 years, God puts a time limit on man's lifespan. And that happens, man's lifespan gradually dwindles away. If you were to keep reading in the book of Genesis, you see men's lifespans get shorter and shorter and shorter because of right there, okay? Okay? Heretics like that, uh, the um, Calvinist heretics like that, like to say that this is the amount of time that it, was from the flood or, or something like that. No, this is talking about it, it, it. It's what it says. Man's years, yet his days shall be 120 years. God put a time limit on the lifespan of man. Okay? Which came about gradually. Okay? There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God, angels, came in unto the daughters of men, and they bear children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. Okay? Giants. 
You know, the uh, fossils found of men uh, about 10 foot tall, 9 foot tall. There you go. Okay. And why was that? Because this is before the flood. Okay. This is before the flood. Before the flood, everything was different. After the flood, I have a video on this, uh, Ham's Real Sin. Okay. After the flood, okay, after uh, Noah came out of the ark, he made, a, he was a husbandry and he got drunk off of the wine. I believe before the flood, men, uh, grapes, stuff like that didn't become alcoholic that easily. Okay. Things were very different before the flood and after the flood. Okay. Very different. Very different. Okay. Keep that in mind. Verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually, because of Adam, okay? Because of Adam. They ate from the tree. God confronted Adam, gave Adam a chance to repent, to come clean. What did Adam do? Like all lost people do. The, the woman thou gavest to be with me, she did give me of the tree, and I ate, and I did eat. Blaming someone else, making excuses. Blaming God for God giving him uh, Eve, okay? And it was Eve, not Steve, okay? And so, therefore, it was God's fault because the woman tricked, uh, gave to Adam, and yeah, he did sin. See, that's the sign. That's the old man. That gets done away with after the Lord saves you. Okay, because today when you are saved, the Lord lives in you. And you are sealed until the day of redemption. Circumcision made without hands, see. Okay? Okay, you with me? So, you have within you the Lord, but you're still in the flesh. Your spirit and soul are still in the flesh, see. And sin has been relegated to the skin suit. The flesh, okay? And God himself refers to the flesh as sinful, Catholic, okay? Okay? The flesh profiteth nothing, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, okay? Romans chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 4, okay? Blows out of the water these covert closet Catholics who like to defend the flesh, okay? Blows it out of the water. Okay? Are you with me? Okay? So man, verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And see, when the Lord saves you, and He, uh, you are sealed with him, the Holy Ghost, he will tell you what to do. Don't do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. But you still struggle against the old nature, which has been relegated to the flesh. The, um, the spirit versus the flesh. Okay? You get it? You're not saved. I don't expect you to get that. But I'm going to put links in this video. Please check out these links, okay? Let's continue. And it repented the Lord. God repented. Sh 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 shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Let's read. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. Look at this. And it grieved him at his heart. So you see repent and grieve. Sorrow. Sorrow. Repentance and sorrow. Brokenness and contrition. God, God can't sin. God repented, turned, because he was sorry, okay, that he had made man, grieved him. He was sorry that he had done it, okay? It's not that God was a sinner. God forbid. Only Satan would say such stuff, okay? which most of you who are, anyone who is not of the church of the living God, you do your deeds of your father, the devil. Okay? Okay? So, let's continue. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, 
both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And of course, he commands Noah to get two of every kind of uh, creature and whatnot and bring them on the ark. Okay? And then the ark, which is a type of the redemption of the purchase possession, the casting away before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? It's all the type. Okay? Okay? Hence the flood. Where God covered the earth with waters and destroyed the everything, okay, except those that were on the ark, okay. Uh, Genesis chapter seven, okay. Genesis chapter seven, verses one on to verse five, okay, or on to verse six, okay. Genesis chapter seven, okay. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou. And all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Okay. Uh, and very quickly, look in Genesis chapter 5, verse 29. Genesis chapter 5, verse 29. And he called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. Hey, do you know that the ground is cursed still? Huh? Yeah, the ground is still cursed because of man. That gets done away with with the new heavens and the new earth there, hot shots. Okay. For who that is intended, you know who you are. Noah, comfort. That's why we look at that. Let's continue in uh, Genesis chapter 7. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Okay, so excuse me. Excuse me, I got that confused. Uh, of fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of the earth. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And every li living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. And Noah was six hundred years old, when the flood of waters was upon the earth. And who was on the ark? On the ark? Noah and his wife. Shem and his wife. Ham or uh, Ham and his wife. No. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Yeah. Uh, there were each man, Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Noah, Ham, uh, Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Okay? And their wives. Noah, Shem. Ham, Japheth, and their wives. There were eight persons, spirit, soul, and body, on the ark. I've, I've seen movies, that one movie, Noah, where a descendant of Cain got onto the ark. No, no, no. I personally believe that the line of Cain died in the flood. Okay? You can argue about the wives of Noah and his sons, were they of Cain? You can argue that, but I personally believe that the line of Cain died in the flood. Okay? Check out that video, Ham's uh, Real Sin. Okay? Please do that. Okay? But there was a flood. And after the flood, Ham's Real Sin comes up. Okay? Now we're going to end this in um, Genesis chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11. Okay? Genesis chapter 11. And the whole earth was of one language. Uh, Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 on to verse 9. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Hold your place there and go to First Chronicles, the tongue 
Numbing the book of First Chronicles. <laughs> Why do you call it that, Brad? It's, uh, you read uh, just one chapter out of uh, Chronicles, uh, you'll, you'll see what I mean. You'll see what I mean. Okay? Okay, First Chronicles. First Chronicles. Okay? First Chronicles. Let me see. We are looking for Nimrod. Nimrod. Okay, hold on, brethren. Hold on. I'm going to be with you, uh, me on this, okay? I got to check this up because I cannot think about it uh, right offhand. Okay, Nimrod. Beg your pardon. Oh, will you give me a break? Nimrod. Beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Okay. Okay, Genesis ch uh, chapter 10, 8. Okay, excuse me. I beg your football pardon for that. Genesis chapter 10, 8. Sorry for that. You, know, you get to see a little of how it's done. Genesis chapter 10, 8. Okay. 8 on to verse 10 in Genesis chapter 10. And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Erech, and Akkad, and Kelneh, in the land of Shinar. It's very important when you're reading uh, Genesis chapter 11, because Nimrod and his wife, Semiramis. The name Semiramis is not mentioned in the scriptures, but Diana of the Ephesians is. The Queen of Heaven is. That's talking about what is known as Semiramis. You know, the Roman Catholic Mary. Okay? Read the two Babylons by Alexander Hislop. Brings it all into context. But let's get back to Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 on to verse 9. Sorry for going through that palaver uh, to get that. I couldn't think of it right offhand. This is a little impromptu if you haven't figured that out, okay? So, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, tributed unto Nimrod. And they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. I will be like the Most High. Read uh, Isaiah chapter 14, okay? And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower. A tower. Whose top may reach unto heaven. I will be like the Most High, okay? And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered upon abroad upon the face of the whole earth. This is exactly what Roman Catholicism is doing today. And in that new cat catechism, I'm going to give a, a video link that where we go through that. They call this that um, the spreading ab about that God did, they call that error. Roman Catholicism calls what God does error. Don't you ever forget that. Okay, but hold your place here. Isaiah chapter 14. Okay, Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. Work with me, fingers. Like I said, this is very impromptu. Okay, now in Genesis chapter 11, verse 4, and they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. These ziggurats, these high towers, the higher you get to the heavens, the more holy you are, the higher you get to God. Get it? Okay. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord does that, as we're going to see. But Roman Catholicism caused that error. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 5. Let's read 11 under verse 15. Those of you of the Church of the Living God, you know this. 
This video is not primarily for you of the Church of the Living God, just so you know. Okay. Genesis, uh, Isaiah chapter 14. Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials. Read Ezekiel chapter 28 on your own time, people. Out of the authorized version of the scriptures. King James Version, okay? The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. Oh, where their worm dieth not, and their fire is not, where the worm dieth not, and the fire is never quenched. You know, when our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, sweet Jesus, talks about eternal damnation burning and ever burning forever in hell. Oh, but that's the Catholic doctrine. You coadjutors are pathetic, by the way, just to let you all know. Okay. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Pay attention. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into the heavens. Genesis chapter 4, uh, chapter 11, verse 4. And they said, Go to let us. Build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. I will ascend into I will ascend into heaven, back in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. I will also sit, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. In the sides of the north. Oh, perhaps at the fake Mount Sinai? Hmm, interesting, huh? I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Five I wills. Five is attributed unto death. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. To the sides of the pit. Mm -hmm. Interesting, yes? Go back to Genesis chapter 11. Picking up at verse 5. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now... Nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. See, we as fallen man, we all get together. We want to build ourselves towers to be as gods, knowing good and evil, and come up with evolution and the religion of evolution, the religion of the uh, poison crown. It's not good. That's why God likes. Things separate. You there, you there, you, that, 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 that. Okay? You get it? But that is a, look at that verse. God admits, when we get together, nothing's going to be restrained from whatever they have imagined to do. And what did we already look at? Of what God said of the imagination of man, that it is evil constantly? Huh? Do you get it? When man lost man and Adam get together, they want to make themselves gods. And that's exactly what Roman Catholicism is preaching right now. Wake up, people. Wake up. They're using the religion of the, uh, of the poison crown to bring everybody together, but also to separate those who've got brains from those of you poor people who have fallen for this. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 7. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence, upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. They did not, he did not destroy the city. But see, God spread them out because when they got together, they were trying to make themselves gods. And Roman Catholicism calls this heresy. 
Or, or error, excuse me. Yeah, they're calling God a liar. Remember, Catholics are Christians. Yeah, they're not of the Church of the Living God. Verse 9, therefore the name of it is called Babel. What does that word mean? Let's find out. Because there the Lord, because there, because, excuse me, the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. And hence, people, everybody needs to come together to overcome the religion of the poison crown, which the Jesuit order has created. Look, I, I, I know I'm casting my pearls before swine. I, I I understand the times. I understand the times that these days are evil. Okay, I understand that these are that we live in perilous times. That men are lovers of their own selves. You know, you're an atheist. You're a liar. You do believe in a god. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. It's the one that you look at, at in the mirror. You liar. Okay. You do believe in a god. Okay. Please consider these things, dear friend, because sooner or later, more sooner than later, the church of the living God, the body of Christ, is going to be redeemed, caught up, before the time of Jacob's trouble. Erroneously referred to as the pre-tribulation rapture and the time of, and the um, great tribulation. It's the catching away, the redemption of the purchased possession, the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Please consider these things, dear friends. Okay? Thank you so much for watching this if you do. We'll see you later. Okay? Bye-bye. Oh, God have mercy.